Today, there's a lot to cover, so let's start here. First, CDC admits that COVID booster effectiveness against symptomatic infection plummets to 45.5% after just three months. And second, in a new study, lorinlimab, a monoclonal antibody, is showing promise as a long COVID treatment, but not for the reasons we thought it would. So in this video, I'll explain the pertinent details of all this new data. We'll go through my Substack posts together that thoroughly explain each of these topics. Also. I'll show you some graphs and images as supplementary material to help you better understand all of this. But before we begin, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell in the bottom right hand corner so you can be notified when my new videos come out. Also, click my social links in the description if you want more content like this. I post extra exclusive content on Substack and Patreon if you're interested. Anyways, let's get into this. So let me pull up my Substack post on this first matter. Hold on one second. Okay, look at the title. CDC admits new bombshell finding of 45.5% COVID booster effectiveness against symptomatic infection. So now let me scroll down to the data the CDC cites on this 45.5% figure. Okay, so if you look at this graph, the y-axis is vaccine effectiveness percentage and the x-axis, the bottom line that goes left to right, is the time passed and number of doses administered. We're interested in this right here, the red circle. This is telling you that a booster is only 45.5% effective at preventing mild or possibly much worse symptoms from the Omicron BA2 variant. So this is the newest data out there. Now the CDC gets this graph from this study here. Hold on one second, let me pull that up. Okay, as you can see, the title is COVID-19 vaccine effectiveness against the Omicron BA2 variant in England. The thing about this is you would hope or want a vaccine seen, of course, to reduce bad or intense symptoms. Sadly, this data shows that's not really happening nearly as much anymore. Now, the important thing to note here, and this is how I feel and what I've taken from the data, that being most protection or immunity against severe disease or death from COVID was already conferred by multiple exposures to different variants and to a lesser degree vaccination. I said this in a paper that I recently published, that being the probability of someone receiving SARS-CoV-2 induced immunity from one of the many variants is substantially higher than protection that could be gained by a limited amount of vaccine that people are allowed to receive. In other words, not everyone can get vaccinated, but everyone can get COVID. So whether COVID generated symptoms in you or not, whether you realized you had it or not, something as transmissible as SARS-CoV-2 at this point has affected most people. Anyways, moving on. It's clear the vaccines are not as effective as they were, and that's because new variants variants are mutated and the original mRNA code to an old variant is still being used in the vaccine to combat this virus that's evolving. Considering the data we just went over, vaccine policy needs to change. Anyways, let's talk about the next topic. Let me pull up my next Substack post. Hold on one second. Okay, as you can see here, and I'll highlight this, in the title it says, lorinlimab, which is a monoclonal antibody. Now let me show you a graph on this so you can better understand what I'm about to explain. One second. Okay, so in a new study, many people with long COVID were treated with this antibody named lorinlimab. And turns out it worked pretty well, but not for the reason scientists thought it would. Now, to set the table, understand that lorinlimab binds to what are called CCR5 receptors on different immune cells. CCR5 are involved in the immune or inflammatory cascade. Essentially, cells that have these CCR5 receptors on their membrane signal additional inflammatory cytokines or cells when the body feels there's a problem. Then it sends those cells to the area that it feels is a problem. As you can see, if this balance becomes out of whack, overexpression of CCR5 surface receptors on different immune cells could force the body to over-signal and create excess inflammation and attract more cells that have the same CCR5 receptor, which keeps this process going. And as you know, inflammation equals disease. Now, increased CCR5 containing cells were thought to be one of the main drivers of long COVID. However, look at this image here. Look at figure B. Look at the box that says lorinlimab treated. Well, turns out many of those treated with lorinlimab in this study, ironically, had their levels of CCR5 cells like CD45 cells and CCR5 cells increase 
instead of decrease, but their long COVID symptoms subsided anyways. Now that is opposite to how we thought it worked with long COVID. Basically, if you look at this graph, the first red box at zero weeks, then increased by nearly double at eight weeks, which is the second red box next to it. That doubling means there was an increased number of inflammatory cells present, even though long COVID symptoms subsided after the drug was given. This clearly suggests there's another mechanism to long COVID. It's not simply the immune mediated theory we once thought to be the main driver. Anyways, those are the facts. We still need more data on this, but if there's anything you'd like to learn about in the future, please leave it in the comments section below and I'll see you on the next one.